today we are diving into linear equations. This is going to be an entire playlist. Uh, obviously this is our first video. Today we're going to be writing mathematical statements using symbols. Before we do that though, we want to front load some math vocabulary with you so that you can see some of the words and write them down that you're going to be hearing throughout the entire playlist. So let's jump on the tracks and get this train moving. So our first math vocabulary term is term, right? So in math and how we're going to be using this word is it's the different parts of an expression that are being added and subtracted. Um, so this is going to include uh, a couple of the vocabulary words that you're going to see underneath of this and then we'll get into an example where we're labeling it so you can kind of see it, but it's the different parts of an expression that are being added or subtracted. Our next one is a constant. A constant is a number in an expression with a fixed value, okay? Um, in other words, it's a number with no variable attached, just a standalone number by itself, typically a whole number, although it could be a decimal or a fraction as well, um, but it's a number with a fixed value or with no variable attached. And then that leads us into the next one, variable. Um, and many of you know this from our previous playlist, but a variable is an unknown number and we represent that with a letter. Throughout this entire playlist, we'll be representing that with either X or Y. And then we have one more, coefficient. So a coefficient is the number being multiplied by the variable. In other words, it's the number in front of the variable that you can see right here, right? So for this one, the variable would be Y and the coefficient would be five because when they're next to each other, we're really saying five groups of Y. But again, we just call that number in front of a variable a coefficient. So let's take these terms and kind of look at an equation and see um, really a visual representation of all of them. So as we know from previous lessons, um, an equation is kind of like a scale, like you can see right here, right? And what we can assume when there's an equal sign is that each expression on either side of the equation is equal to each other, they're balanced. That's why we represent it with a scale, as you can see right here. So this whole entire part would be considered a expression. And on the other side of the equal sign, right, we also call this an expression. And that's why we use the scale to represent that because when, we're, when we have an equal sign right here, we're saying that the 3x plus 5 minus 4xy is balanced or equivalent to 5 minus 2x. So in algebra, typically our goal is to figure out what numbers can we plug in for our variables that will make this true. Um, but we're going to get to that later down the road. That's where we're going. But first, let's go ahead and label some of the uh, math vocabulary that we talked about in our previous slide. So we can see right here that the blue things I'm underlining are coefficients, right? Um, the five is considered a constant, right? Because it's a number without a variable attached to it. Obviously we have our variables, which are gonna be our letters. And then terms are kind of what we were talking about earlier. That's kind of the most difficult to understand when just looking at a definition. So let's go ahead and use a different color to circle our terms. So this is an entire term. The three X is a term. My five is a term and my four X Y is also considered a term because they are separated by the addition and subtraction signs, right? And so even though this is a coefficient with a variable and this is a constant, I would say that this expression is made up of three different terms that we're either going to be adding or subtracting together. Okay, and so that's kind of the math vocabulary we're going to be using throughout the entire playlist. Let's get on the tracks and learn about what we are going to be doing today. Today I will be able to write mathematical statements using symbols, which we know as variables, to represent numbers. So what we want to do today is we want to look at these expressions in, in words and we want to write them down with mathematical statements. So I like to circle my operational words or words that tell me what to do with my constants and my coefficients. And so here I'm going to square five times a number. Okay, so five times a number. And you're going to, you will get three more than 
the number, right? And so I can kind of see that I have five times a number. My number I'm going to assume is an x because we're going to be using x to represent our variables. And you're going to get or you're going to equal three more than the number. So I want to do five times a number squared. Okay, so I'm going to have five times a number or five x. And then I want to square that. And that is going to equal three more than the number. So it didn't say times more than, it just said more than. And so I'm going to have the number x plus three. And so now I've written my mathematical statement for what these words are telling me. Five times the number squared equals, or you get three more than the number. So three plus x, or x plus three. Okay, so here we have a, um, a little bit more of a confusing one if you don't really break it down and think about it. So I know, I, I know the sum, okay, so I'm going to be adding, of three consecutive integers, okay, or numbers, is... Okay, and this is is going to be an equal sign, 372. So I now have something, and then it's going to equal 372. So when I think about the words consecutive, okay, I think about, uh, I don't know, 2, 3, 4, 5. And when they're consecutive, what is happening? I'm adding 1 each time, right? So 2 plus 1 is th uh, 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, okay? Or you could say plus 1, plus 2, plus 3 would be 5, right? So there's a couple different ways to think about it. So I'm going to use x as my integer. So that's going to be my first number. Okay, and so if I start with x, what is the consecutive number after x? So if I had 2 right here, how did I get to my next consecutive number? I, well, I had to add 1. So the sum of three consecutive integers. So my first one is going to be x. Then I'm going to be adding x plus 1, right? Because obviously if I was doing 2 and then it was 2 plus 1, that would be 3. So then how did I get the next one? Well, I had x and then I had to add 2 to get the next number that would be consecutive. Now, if it helps you to put these in parentheses, you can do that at first, right? So x plus 1. 2, so I have x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2, and that is 372. So now it says the sum of three consecutive integers is 44, but this one's a little bit different because it gives you some very specific information. It says let x be the middle of the three integers, right? So if I go back to my three consecutive integers I used on my last page, instead of x being 2, I would say x is 3. So think about if x is 3, how would you show the number before and how would you show the number after? If you want to go ahead and try it, go ahead and pause the video, try to write down your answer and then push play and we can check it. If you're not there yet, that's okay. Growth mindset. Let's do this one together. So I know that I was going to be adding, and again, three consecutive integers, and this is, is equals, right? So 44. Now, I know for this one, though, it said let x be the middle of the three integers. So I'm going to be adding something to x on both sides, and that is going to equal 44. Okay, and again, today we're not solving this. We're just trying to write the mathematical expression. So just like last time, how would I show the next integer after x? Well, I would do x plus 1, right? Well, how would you show the... Uh, digit or the number or the integer before x. Okay, well, to me, that makes sense that I would just do x minus 1, right? And so I would have x minus 1 plus x plus x plus 1 equals 44, and these numbers would be consecutive, right? And then event, you don't actually even need the parentheses right here um, because it doesn't change anything, right? Because eventually when you learn how to simplify, you'll be combining all of them. So you could just write it x minus 1 plus x plus x plus 1 equals 44. And that would have been perfectly acceptable as well. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Um, you, really, this is just about practice. So if you're not comfortable yet, please go back, rewatch the video, uh, practice whatever work your teacher has for you, and then you can 
get better at it as you continue to practice. Once you've mastered how to write these mathematical statements, the rest of this playlist is going to be very, very easy for you. Thank you so much for checking us out. Please check out our other videos and songs on YouTube at, at InstructedBeats Official. You can follow us on Instagram at, at InstructedBeats. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. InstructedBeats, out.